This is the Prestigious Initiative. Welcome. I'm Chris Bean, and here with me is Chris Kent. Hello, Mr. Kent. Hello, sir. So we previously were talking about five quick tips on the art of effective communication. And today we're going to dive into the first of those, which is active listening. And active listening is a key part to be a efficient or effective communicator. It's a powerful tool that can transform your relationships and your interactions. So today we're going to hopefully get you ready to uh, get you ready and enhance your communication skills and help you to become a better listener. So kind of first up, I suppose we should could kind of uh, delve into help us to understand what is active listening. Active listening is, you know, really it's the foundation of effective communication. It goes beyond simply hearing what somebody says. It involves giving your full attention and focus to the speaker. And, you know, how do you do that? Well, there's a couple of key points that we're going to go into for that. But really, already we get the sense that being a effective communication expert and effective or, and a, a um, active listener is key because we want our full attention on what the speaker is saying. We want to be able to be focused on what they're saying, not just, you know, halfway listening or, or, or looking at them, but looking at them, listening to them, being fully aware of what is going on. You want to have kind of all your senses in this. And so, you know, some of the components that, that make up active listening are you want to maintain eye contact. You want to provide verbal and, of course, nonverbal cues. You want to avoid interruptions. Now, these kind of go both ways. As you're, If you're the person who's speaking, you want to try to develop or to build a, a place as you're talking that if you're going to have questions, that the questions are, are maintained at the end where that listener has an opportunity to listen to what you're saying and then they have the opportunity to ask, answer or uh, sorry, ask questions later on after you're done speaking. And then you want to try to that by doing that, well, that will cut down the distractions that are going on, or at least, you know, the hand raising and then asking a question, perhaps getting off topic before jumping back to whatever it is that you're that you're talking about. So providing those those opportunities to answer or ask any questions they may have towards the end. Another one is maintain eye contact. So if you're if you're talking with somebody, of course, you want to be able to look at them and not just kind of look at them, but look at look them in the eyes, look at their eyes as you're talking with them. That is that is huge as you're becoming an active listener. So again, those components were maintaining eye contact, provide verbal and nonverbal cues. Well, how do we do that? Well, as we're listening, by default, your body probably is in a certain kind of state. You're nodding your head. You're giving you know, you, like, you know, maybe not pointing and winking like, oh, yeah, I got what you're saying. You know, that maybe is a little bit far, but you want to give cues to the listener that you are actually listening to what they're what they're saying. Right. And, and of course, maybe verbal cues are like, oh, yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, right. Mm, right. Yeah, I, exactly. I know exactly. You know, those type of things let you, the person that you're talking with understand and know that you're actually listening to them, that you are practicing your active listening skills at that moment. So, again, Maintain eye contact, verbal and nonverbal cues, and avoid interruption. If you can master these components, you will create a supportive environment, open and honest, oh, sorry, for open and honest communication. Talking about active listening, I, I know you've said it several times to me personally, and probably on this podcast several times as well, but you got to listen as if there was a test at the end. So that means you're not just listening for that person to be done talking. It sounds cliche, but... You know, you're not waiting for them to stop talking so you can start talking. You're actively listening, paying attention, being engaged. Like you said, you're you're thinking of questions maybe you could ask to help to clarify or just to show that, hey, I'm actually listening to you because I have a specific question about a specific thing that you said and I can engage with you when you're talking. So I think it all kind of can be boiled down into the phrase that you use often, Mr. Bean, which is to listen as if there was a test at the end. And I don't know about you, but I like to pass any tests that I'm given. So, you know, make sure you're actually paying attention and being engaged by uh, being prepared to ask questions or giving those nonverbal cues. You know, I, we, we just, just are coming off of 
our interview with with uh, Jocelyn, and that's something that we did. We talked about it after the fact, but we had to kind of cut out several times where you and I both were were giving that verbal cue of "oh yeah" or "yes," or we would say "mm-hmm," or we you know we try to 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 kind of engage with that conversation, and that you know we're showing that we're actually paying attention and engaging. And in this setting, as a podcast, in that interview, maybe that didn't work quite well. But when you're talking to someone, it's important to have those things present and do that so they know you're actually paying attention. Just imagine if you were to talk to someone that would look at you or not even look at you because we're taking out the aspect of eye contact, which is a good way to communicate. Let's say they're looking down at your shirt or they're looking past your shoulder or looking at the ground and you're just talking and they're just standing there completely silent. No reaction, no change in body, body language, just existing. You're going to feel a little... uh neglected or question whether they're paying attention or not you know another another part to being an active listener is you want to try to overcome any barriers you know one of the barriers of you know really as you're trying to communicate with somebody is you know would be distractions distractions you know whether that be environmental distractions meaning you know there's a tv going on or there's people walking around you're in a coffee shop and people are lots of or a coffee shop a coffee Coffee, uh, coffee, coffee shop, coffee shop. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You know, other people are having lots of different conversations. Sometimes that can be distracting. People walk in. You know, try to limit those distractions down. Another one that I know we have talked about uh, previously on this podcast before is preconceived notions or personal biases. You you want to, um, as the saying goes, you don't want to judge a book by its cover. Again, we did a whole whole episode into that. But you know, really, as you're talking with somebody, uh, Jordan Peterson says this: assume the person you're 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 talking with knows something that you don't. And on that, you know, they, you, you assume that person knows something that you don't, but listen at, listen as if they're sharing with that to you or sharing that with you or to you. And so that person that you're listening to knows something that you don't, and they're ready to tell you that thing, that thing that you don't know yet, that you want to know. They're going to tell it to you, but you have to listen. I, again, listen as if there's a test. And that's, that's not mine. We get that from, from our boss, Dwayne Brummett. Um, who uh, sure we, we will have uh, at some point on the podcast. Uh, another another uh, way to think about that is uh, as opposed to listening listen to anything as if it's a test or if there's going to be a test at the end is another another thought for that is if you have to have somebody repeat something, pretend like you have to pay them a dollar for each word they have to repeat back to you. And I don't know about you, but I mean money is is kind of. I mean, relatively important. It's it's you you, so you need money to live essentially, and so um, if I have to pay somebody a dollar for each mer- each word that they have already told me that I have to have them tell me again, I'm gonna be really listening to make sure I get all those all those nuggets and 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 I re- retain those. So I think those two things coupled together, listen to everything as if it's a test, and for every word that person has to repeat back to you, assume that you have to pay them a dollar for each of those words. I mean that. That will go far and away to get you to where you want to be at as a as a listener, an active listener, as a participant in that conversation, not just kind of an outside onlooker. So again, dealing with overcoming uh, barriers, distractions, preconceived notions, and personal biases, you want to again assume that person that you're talking with knows something that you don't, and they're ready to share that key insight with you. Diving deeper even into preconceived notions and personal biases. Obviously, I think we can all agree that we want to be right. And so sometimes whether you're going into a conversation or or if you're already at the point where it becomes an argument rather than a discussion, uh, try to, as much as you can, approach those th- uh, uh, approach to situations with an open mind and try to ignore or get past your preconceived notions or your personal biases. Now, sometimes factually you will be right, yes. However, try to give someone the other person you're talking to, the opportunity to uh, present a different side of something to you or to change the way you think about something. And I'm not saying you have to be a pushover and believe everything you hear from every person and you know just keep going from one thing to the next. However, you don't have to be right about everything and you probably aren't right about everything. And so kind of like you were saying, listen as if they could teach you something, listen, listen as if they have something to teach you and they're ready or wanting to teach you that thing. Engage with it, think about it intellectually, but don't close yourself off to that. And that will be the barrier to you listening is that you're not paying attention. You're not caring because you know that you are right and you have the correct answer. And so anything you have to say is, is inconsequential because you know you're right. So overcoming those those notions and 
and looking past those kind of biases is is huge and uh it's not always easy and unfortunately sometimes too we don't realize it's happening until it's over and so we had a conversation or we had an argument and then half an hour later you think to yourself oh man you know i really was acting not the best way about this thing or i really was interacting or having a conversation and coming across as this thing i don't want to be and so rather than thinking of those things or realizing that in hindsight try to be conscious of it as you are going through uh, you know going through interactions and trying to communicate better yeah you know i think another key point to being an active listener is empathy empathy is a you know really it's, it's a crucial part of being an active listener it involves understanding and validate uh, validating sorry validating the speaker's feelings and their perspective and really that goes right into what you're saying you know you don't want to be talking with somebody and and playing the i'm right i'm right i'm right i have to be right type of game which f- for me for one is is a challenging thing to do I, I it's hard for me to do that and i think trying to come at it from their perspective you know it would put yourself in their shoes and really i think empathy is the key is the key thing for that because Without empathy, without that opportunity to be able to understand their perspective or their side of it or to, to actually hear what they're saying to you, you're just, you know, you're playing a game that you have to win. And sometimes the game isn't so much that you have to win. Maybe the game is so much, or maybe the game is such that you both win. Maybe the game is such that you learn something, which if you're playing the I have to be right game, learning is, is way far down on the list because you you come at it as, as you know everything. You're always right. You have to be right. It's it's that. But it, that isn't the right thing to do. And so be mindful of your empathy as you're communicating with others, specifically if you're, if you're debating with somebody or if it gets heated and you start arguing with somebody, don't you, you don't have to be right. And on, you know, on top of that, if you win, quote unquote, if you win that argument, that debate, and it's, you know, with your wife, okay, what, I mean, okay, great. You won that. Now, what are you, are you the, you're the tyrant and, and you lured that over her for the, or, I mean, you have to live, you, you live with her for the you know rest of the time or, or she has to live with me for the rest of the time. And so, you know, I, maybe being right in that moment isn't necessarily the game to play, right? Understand their side of it. Be uh, you know, have empathy for their perspective and try to try to knock those shields down from being right all the time and understand there's more to it, right? Tomorrow, you're, if, it, you know, if, it's, with your, if it's your spouse, you, tomorrow you're going to wake up next to that person and, and you don't want those, that negative, you know, I won that type of argument, you know, that's not worth it. It's not worth it. So have empathy for the person who's speaking to, you know, understand their feelings, their perspectives. And, you know, really, I think that that will help to foster a genuine connection. I mean, I, we're right now, I'm the same with, with, your, with your spouse, but with whoever it is that you're talking with or, or debating with or arguing with, perhaps, but have empathy for their perspective, right? Don't just come at it from one side and not even listen to what they're saying. Listen, learn, grow, have a win-win. Let them win. Maybe, maybe you... You know you're right. Fine, okay, fine, whatever. You're right, but what does that do? Nothing. So let them be right. Right? I just have empathy for their feelings as you're as you're communicating with people. And not even sometimes I don't think in the sense of having empathy for their feelings, meaning they need to be right or 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 thinking of it that way, but taking another step too is not only having empathy for their feelings, but having empathy for their feelings in the sense that sometimes they might not be thinking straight or um, they're trying to work through something. And so what I mean is I think we're all, we've all been in positions where our emotions have been high or we've been dealing with things that have stressed us out and we're really, it's really bothering us. And so sometimes we come into conversations and we're not thinking quote unquote clearly, or we're really bothered by some of these things. And, and that really can affect our ability to communicate, but also the communication on both sides. Um, and I, I guess kind of where I'm going with that too is that sometimes people come to you with conversations and we need to maybe dive into the intentions of that conversation. So sometimes someone just wants someone to talk to because 
They need to, they need to talk to somebody. Sometimes they just want to be heard. They want to vent about something or some people call it a rant. They want to go on a rant about something or sometimes they need support when they're, when they're, they're going through something or they need advice or they just need you to be there and to, you know, there's many different things that someone could come to you in a conversation with. And so being aware of the empathy, using your empathy to be aware of their feelings, but also react as best as you can to those feelings, because we also don't go up to each other and say, Hey, I just need you to listen to what I'm going to say. Here's blah, 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 blah. We just start off with blah, 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 blah. Or, Hey, I'm looking for a solution. Can you help me find an answer to this? Uh, usually it's the opposite. You know, it's here, here's this thing that's happening at work. And you really just want to tell me about the bad thing at work, but I'm listening to you and saying, okay, here's what you can do. A, B, C, D. Here's all the answers to your solution. You know, it, so being aware of the empathy of people's feelings and their intentions behind that might be a bigger deal as well. But I think it's an important thing to mention, especially when you're doing active listening, because you can use that empathy, actively listen to the conversation, the things that they're saying, the way they're saying them, and kind of try to decipher what they're looking for out of that conversation when it's not explicitly said. And then it can help guide you as you're trying to communicate with them too. Um, so I know that was a long-winded part of, of, of empathy, but I think that's another aspect to it as well. Well, and you know, that's something me and you do, and, and we've learned to do that, communicate better with that, because sometimes you'll come to me for something and, and I'll be s trying to find the solution for it, and you don't need or want the solution. You just want me to hear what you have to say, or or vice versa. And and so now we're at the point where, and, and maybe this is, this you have to build this into your relationship with whoever you're, be that you're, that you're talking with, but... It's not just, you know, perhaps this person is going to understand this is what I want, but explicitly say, listen, I just, I, you know, I don't need a solution. Just listen. Okay, great. Yep. Fine. So that's good. Or, or you ask the question, are you, do you want me to like, is this, is this, is this something I have to solve? Is this like a, a puzzle to put together? You know, or do you just want, do you, do you just need to, okay, do you just need to talk. All right. That's I'm here for you. So sometimes from, you know, from time to time, it is worth asking that specific question you know is this something you want help with is this something you just want me to hear or 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 is there or is there something else like what do you want me to do with this information you're providing me because otherwise you'll give them the answer to their question you know or their their concern or problem whatever it is and that's not at all what they want all they wanted to, was to be heard all they wanted was a time just to talk and or or you know that is so important. And again, it, I think it's dependent on the relationship or whoever it is that you're talking with, but ho hopefully you can, whoever, if they're willing to, to vent to you, maybe there's a time that you can ask, you know, Hey, is this, you, do you want help with, like, ask those questions. Do you want help with this? Do you just need to, to be heard? Uh, is this, is this something you, you, you just need to get off your chat? Like what is not the purpose of this conversation, but I mean, really, that's the essence of the question. You know, what is the purpose of this conversation? What do you want the outcome to be? And maybe that's too specific for that person, especially in that moment, depending on what it is. But that gives you an opportunity to shift in your brain from problem solving to listening to, to you know, whatever mode of being that you need to be in in that moment. And, you know, again, I, I think it is, if you value the relationship with that person, I think it's important to ask or to be able to ask that question, what specifically do you want from this out uh, from from this from this from this out uh, from this conversation? What is the output that you want? And then you can provide that. That way, you don't have to try to read between the lines. You don't have to, you know, oh, I guessed wrong this time. You know, just what do you what, you know what specifically do? What do you want me to do? Do you want me to listen? Okay, great, I got it. You know, or whatever it is. But I think that it's it's if they're willing to come to you with whatever that concern is be willing to ask them the question what do you want the output for this conversation to be what was the outcome that you want and then then you can shift your mode you can perhaps shift your 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 listening you know either i'm listening to for to solve problems i'm listening to you know listen for for tasks or things that we can build into this or you know i'm just listening to listen or just you know whatever it is but that i think is an important part of being an active listener knowing what mode of active listening you're partaking in at that given moment with that communication you're giving or, or, or taking from that other person. And kind of pair, not, not paragraphing, sorry, 
piggybacking off of that, um, we can do something that's called reflective listening. So it's a technique that involves paraphrasing and summarizing someone's words to demonstrate your understanding. And so you ask that question, you try to figure out what they're trying to get from the conversation. And, and when they're talking, whatever the answer may be, we mentioned this earlier too, uh, when you're active listening, kind of feed back to them what you're hearing. So, you know, I, what I hear you saying is this. And in some cases, I mean, maybe they you paraphrase that, give it back to them. And then if you have an answer for them, they want an answer, give it to them. Or just to reassure them that you are actually paying attention and you're listening as if there's that test at the end and kind of reflecting back to them what you're hearing so they know that you're paying attention. And sometimes it's just important to hear it from someone else's mouth because we get stuck on our own heads and we're thinking about these ideas, these ideas or these situations and we're just saying it all once or you ever thought of something in your head and then you say it out loud and you thought, man, that sounded way different than I did in my head when I was thinking it. You know, so being that mirror, being able to reflect that back to someone is a very important skill as well to have when we're dealing with active listening. So, you know, it's it's important in creating that safe space to to share our thoughts and emotions. And uh, along with that, obviously, you probably shouldn't reflect it back in a judgmental way, unless it's unless it's you know part of your relationship and you guys can joke about that. But if you're coming with me, coming to me with an idea that you're taking very seriously, you give it to me and I say it back to you in a mocking tone. It's not going to make you feel any better or feel safe communicating to me too. So again, listen actively so you can decipher or pick apart what's happening and respond correctly in those situations using that reflective listening skill. You know, and this is something I do frequently, sometimes most of the time without even thinking or or realizing that I'm, you know, being or or using reflective listening. Um, For example, we, we talked about this already, but we had last week our interview with Jocelyn there was a couple of times as she was explaining something, I would do my best to listen and, and, and understand what she was saying. And then I would reiterate that to her, or reflect that to her. And then I can get clarification. Oh, I was wrong on this point, or I needed to adjust this. And so that gives, you know, reflective listening as you're, you're giving that information as you heard it, or as you understand it back to the listener, that gives you an opportunity to understand if you understand what they're saying correctly. And then it gives them an opportunity to fix those things. If, no, it's not quite that. Let's do it this way instead. Especially, you know, at, at work, if you have, your boss has given you instructions on how to do something, that is, if you're not taking, you know, detailed notes on all that, and even then, to reiterate those inform- that information or to be, or to use that reflective listening back to them, just to clarify, just to specify what you heard and what you are, or what you need to do or what they need you to do in those times. That is so important just to make sure you're on the same page because it's really easy for your boss to say something to you, you to understand it one way and to run with it. And then for your boss to come back, whoa, 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 that is not at all what I meant. And you should have known that because, you know, but it's hard to do that, you know, because in their head they have it, you know, they're giving you the, you know, the essence of what they're, what they need to say sometimes because they already have it all worked out in their head. So they'll just give you the short, sweet version because it's, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not necessarily always worth their time to give them everything, although it should be, because then you clearly understand what it is. So by giving them, uh, rephrasing that back to them, just to be clear on what they want you to do is, I think, very important, especially at work with your boss, with your, with your managers, whoever, just so you and them are on the same page on what you need to do specifically. So if you haven't done that before, and you know, for the first couple of times you do it, you might feel silly. You might feel like, you know, you're playing dumb, but it, it is not, it don't, it's not that. It's not that at all because you want to very clearly identify the things that you need to do the way that they want you to do them. Because otherwise, and I'm sure this has happened to you, otherwise you do something the way that you thought they meant for it to be done. And it wasn't that way, Right. You know, you, you, your, your wife says, oh, go to the grocery store and, and get X, Y, Z, A, B, C. And then you come home, oh, I got these things. Okay, but well, that's not what I asked you to get. Well, it is actually what you asked me to get. Look at the text. Well, yeah, but I actually meant that. Okay, well, I didn't know that. And you didn't ask the question. You know, I didn't ask the question back to, to clarify those things. So be able or, or, or be humble enough to ask the question to clarify specifically what you need to do in those moments. Again, 
you might think about it like you're playing dumb or it's not it's not that it's not that at all but you might feel like that as you're as you're doing that but again if anything do it for your benefit so that you know specifically exactly what the intended purpose of whatever it is is and then there's no confusion because you clarified it for them so important so to wrap up this episode on active listening remember that effective communication starts with being a great listener by practicing active listening you'll not only improve your com- communication skills but you're deep- deepen your relationship with others stay tuned for our next episode where we will explore another essential aspect to the f- art of being an effective communicator thank you for joining us on the prestigious initiative If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to the Proceeds Initiative on your favorite podcast platform. Leave us a review. We appreciate your support. Until next time, remember to actively listen and communicate with intention. Keep inspiring for greatness.